Hey guys, welcome back. So I hope everyone is doing well today. I wanted to go over this verse and it's from the interaction that Jesus has with the Pharisees and one of them is a lawyer and this is Matthew 22, 36 through 40. I'm going to really read um, 34 through 40. Up here I just have part of it but I'm going to read the whole thing to you. And we're talking about loving others as you love yourself. Okay, so now when the Pharisees heard that he, Jesus, had silenced or muzzled the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of their number, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, what kind of commandment is great and important? The principal kind in the law. Some commandments are light. Which ones are heavy? He was asking. 37. And he replied to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind or intellect. This is the great, most important, and principal and first commandment. 39. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. And verse 40 says, These two commandments sum up and upon them depend all the law and the prophets. So I did a video on the law and the prophets, but this one is on verse 39. And the second commandment is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. And then it does reference Leviticus 19.18, which I'll read to you as well. You shall not take revenge or bear any grudge against the sons of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Okay, so that's the verse. And I wanted to just give you a visual on this. So the scripture is telling us that we're to love others as we love ourselves. So that is presupposing that people love themselves. We take care of ourselves, don't we? We make sure that we get enough to eat. We make sure that we go to sleep and that we have clothes and that we have the basics in life, right? That is presupposed when you are human because God has designed us for self-preservation. And so when you are loving yourself, the more you love yourself, not in a prideful way, not in an arrogant way, not in a self-centered way, but in a loving way, in an agape way. The more you love yourself with agape love, you're lining yourself up with the Lord because He loves you with agape love. And if you can take some of that love of His and allow it to come into your heart and bring your heart to life, over time as that love fills up your heart, it can overflow to where you want to line up with the Lord so that you will start to forgive yourself, befriend yourself, find your heart if you've abandoned it or divorced it or thrown it away. And you will start to learn to love yourself as God does because you want to line up with him. Amos 3.3 3 says, how can two people walk together if they don't agree? So if you're not loving yourself the way God does, then you are out of alignment with him in that area. So this video is just to encourage you to keep walking on the path where you are slowly learning to line up with the Lord by loving yourself with agape love just like he does. So here's a little bit of a visual for you. Love others as you do yourself. Matthew 22, 36 through 39 or 34 through 40. Okay, so here is your life. Say this is your life. And this would be, I guess, your heart in the middle. You know how everything flows from the heart. So you're receiving this agape love from God. And you're filling up on it. And with that agape love from God, you're lining up with him more and more as you receive it and let it take over your whole soul. And so while this is going on, you can love God with that agape love. You, over time, will learn to love others with that agape love. See, you're allowing it to come down into your heart. He's giving you this agape love and you're agreeing with it. And he's filling up your heart and it can spill out back to God, to other people. It can spill over to your family. It can spill over 
to even strangers, people you don't even know. You will have love for them. It can spill over to enemies. But there's one place left that we haven't identified yet. Given what I've just been talking about, what would go in this blank space? Remember what I just talked about? Verse 39, right? The second is like it. Love others as you love yourself, right? So this would be self. That love that you receive from God, that agape love that you're allowing and giving it permission to come into your heart and fill it up, that will also, if you allow it, spill over to you. It won't just be in your heart, but you will become cognizant of and aware of the fact that you are made in the image of God just like everybody else that Jesus died for. That you are just as important as the rest of the body of Christ. And so in that importance, the fact that God sent Christ to die for you, you can love yourself. You're one of the people that Christ died for and you need love too. And so when you start to forgive yourself for not being perfect, forgive yourself for the things that come up from your past that you may uh, shame yourself for or hide from other people, you can go back and forgive yourself for those things. Okay, because the Lord has forgiven you if you're in Christ. And so you can line up with him more by forgiving yourself. So the point here is don't leave yourself out of your network of care. Don't forget about yourself. You want to include yourself with all these other people. So this would be the takeaway. Remember, include what in your network of care? Include yourself in your network of care. It may help you to know that those who are always caretaking they're always taking care of other people and doing for other people at the expense of themselves. Those people have an extremely high percentage and, and likelihood of cancer, disease, uh, mental illness, all kinds of diseases in the mind and the body. Those who care for everybody else, but not for themselves. They have the highest rate of disease. And so that would be a manifestation of what the Lord is trying to tell us here by what not to do. Don't leave yourself out of your network of care. Include yourself in your network of care. God, others, your family, strangers, enemies, and yourself. Okay, so this is just an encouragement for those of you out there who are struggling with uh, taking care of yourself or investing in yourself or loving yourself, this is encouragement to go ahead and start doing that. It's okay, it's right, and it's good, and it's God's will for you, all right? This is not to be arrogant or self-centered or narcissistic. No, not at all. This is agape love, okay? This is agape love. So maybe do a word study on agape, and that will Open your mind up to find out more about this love that is a strange love from another planet. It's from somewhere else. It's a love that we're not even familiar with. So we have to get familiar with it. But that is the love that we're talking about today. Loving yourself as God does with his agape love. And in order to do that, you have to let him love you first. Remember up here. You let him love you, and then you will have love bubbling up in your heart, and you can start to love yourself, accept yourself, forgive yourself, and then you'll really be lining up with him. Okay, so I hope this is helpful, and God bless you.